Welcome to this series of bite-sized training videos from Wellington. This video will be focusing on how to navigate your way around Project Online. In this video, we'll be looking at the Project Web App homepage, the Project Center, and then from the Project Center, I'll be showing you how you can access all areas of a project, including the project detail pages, the schedule, as well as the project site. We'll also be looking at how to navigate to the Resource Center, the PMO portal and the Power BI dashboard reports. Even though this video will provide a brief overview of the whole system, it's useful to note that Project Online is a role-based environment whereby some of the areas of the site are designed for specific roles. So for example, the schedule and the project detail pages are primarily visited by the project manager and the resource center is primarily designed for use by resource managers. Therefore, some areas will be covered in more depth in separate videos. From the Project Web App homepage, a user can navigate to different areas of the site by using either the Quick Launch pane on the left or the Track Your Work tiles along the top. This environment also includes a quick search function, which enables the user to easily find their project and go to either the project detail pages or directly to the project site. And as Project Online is security trimmed, you will only see projects here which you have access to. The Track Your Work tiles on the homepage are useful at highlighting the assigned items to the user. The Projects tile will take the user to the Project Centre, where they will be able to see a list of all the projects that they have access to. The Approvals tile highlights any pending approvals. For example, as a project manager, these could be for task updates that have been submitted by team members. The Tasks tile will take the user to a list of all the project tasks that have been assigned to them. The Timesheets tile, if you're using timesheets in your organisation, will take the user to their current timesheet for that period. And finally, the Risks and Issues tiles will take the user to a list of the risks and issues that have been assigned to them from any project within the system. So for example, if I click on one of these tiles, I can see that I currently have one active risk and one active issue assigned to me as the logged in user. And if I click on the project name, this will take me directly to that risk or issue where I can view the details and provide an update. To return to the Project Web App homepage from here, expand Quick Links in the Quick Launch pane and then select PWA Home. Now let's go to the Project Centre. You can do this by either clicking on the tile or on the link in the Quick Launch pane. The Project Centre is a list of all the published projects in the system. The current view is showing this list grouped by department and then workflow phase. I can change the view by going to the Projects tab and then clicking on the View drop-down. Project Online will already have some out-of-the-box views, but your system administrators can create more custom views to suit your organisation. As well as changing the view, I can also choose to add a filter. For example, I could filter by a particular workflow phase. So to add the filter, I first select the field name Make sure that the field that you're trying to filter by is included in the view, otherwise it will not be available in the list. Select the test. For example, I'm going to use the contains parameter and then type in the value. Once you're done, click OK. And you'll see that the view here is filtered to only show me projects that are in the planning workflow phase. To remove the filter, go back to the filter dropdown and select No Filter. Using this option here, I can also change or remove the grouping. Some other useful features on the ribbon include Outline. This is where you can choose how many levels of data should be displayed. For example, where you're working with large amounts of data, you may choose to only display level one. And then if I scroll down, you can see here that you can then expand the sections that you're interested in. So back to the toolbar, I can see that I've also got roll-ups. This shows roll-ups for specific fields. For example, this would be useful when displaying project costs. If you were then grouped by program, 
you would see the cost rolled up for that programme. By selecting the checkbox here, you have the option or not to display the Gantt chart. And then using the splitter bar, you can always expand and reduce the Gantt chart display. On the view itself, you will notice that the indicators column includes some icons. The icon on the left against every project, when selected, will enable the user to open their project schedule in Microsoft Project. This is obviously assuming that they have the project client included as part of their license. The other icons visible are pulled through from the project site, and these highlight whether the project has any associated issues, risks or documents. Clicking on either of these will take you to the issue log, risk log or document library for that project. Clicking on the project name will open the project in the browser. So let's do that. The landing page visible here is known as the workflow status page. I can see from the lifecycle at the top that this project is in the proposal phase. And if I scroll down, I can then see the remaining phases to complete the project lifecycle are listed. This area of the site is known as the project detail pages. Project detail pages are essentially forms used to capture information about the project. The project detail pages available for your project are listed on the left hand side. And depending on not if workflow is being used, more project detail pages may become available to capture different information as the project progresses through its life cycle. So if I go ahead and click on business case, this will show me an example of what a typical project detail page may look like. The layout is split into two columns with a mixture of free text and lookup field options. Note that any mandatory fields are those marked with a red asterisk. Also included in the project detail pages is the schedule. So if I click here, You can see that the look and feel is very similar to Microsoft Project with the basic task detail on the left, the Gantt chart on the right, and then the timeline along the top. As a project manager, I do have the option to edit the schedule in the browser as well as in the project client. So to do this, I would go to the task ribbon. I then click on edit, and then I'd select in browser. By selecting in MS Project, this then opens the schedule in the client for editing. Once you're finished making your updates, you must remember to save, publish and close the project, just like you would when you're in the project client. You will then also be prompted to check the project in. It's best practice to always check your project in, so do get into the habit of doing this. So before leaving the page, I can see that underneath the project detail pages, you will also see a link to the project site. Clicking here will take me to the project SharePoint site. The project site is a collaborative space for the project team. Here the team can make use of SharePoint document management. It's also where the team can manage risks and issues. They can keep action and decision logs, as well as change request logs and any other key project management toolkits. To return to the project detail pages, click on the project details link in the quick launch pane or to return to the project web app homepage click on the PWA home link. From the project web app homepage users can also navigate to the resource centre. Similar to the project centre the Resource Centre provides you with centralised visibility of all your resources in one location. The Resource Centre will be covered in more depth in a separate training video. Also available from the Project Web App homepage is a link to the PMO portal. This is the PMO portal and it's used by the project management community to share and discover best practice. Again, the PMO portal will be covered in more depth in a separate training video. And finally, from the project web app homepage, 
users can connect to Power BI, a business analytics solution that brings your data to life through interactive dashboard reporting. Power BI is self-service, so it can be accessed anywhere at any time. The use of Power BI with Project Online is covered more in a separate video. So that concludes this general overview of Project Online. Look out for these other videos that will provide a more detailed look into some of the topics that were covered.